explained, as Newton showed in, in Wallace, uh, it can be constructed through infinite process. And Newton came up with an infinite series that you could sum that would yield pi. But what is an infinite series? So this begins to beg a question. Okay, so right already here, 200 years before Kronecker, uh, Newton and Leibniz in developing the calculus began to encounter the infinite. Okay, and they didn't have a real rigorous way of dealing with the infinite. In fact, uh, if you look at a lot of the history of calculus, uh, it, it, it was a toolbox at first. Okay, it gave good answers. <laughs> But there, weren't, there was not a precise notion of what it meant for a series of numbers to converge. Okay? There wasn't a precise notion of limit. And if you have a series of numbers, an infinite sum, that is in some sense a limit of a bunch of finite sums. Right? But what does it mean for a set of numbers to converge? Are there even enough numbers available to capture all the limits? Right? If you only have natural numbers and rational numbers. Yes, they can be ordered on a line, but why is it the case that um, if you start putting in, let's say, first all the rationals, uh, first all the integers, and then all the rationals, okay, don't make me do them all. Uh, how do we know that they that they, uh, what does it mean for these, these things to fill out a line? And they don't, of course, because we know that there are other lengths in here. But once you start talking about sequences of numbers converging, uh, is it possible maybe that a sequence of numbers converges in some sense, but, but doesn't have a limit? There isn't a number there? Whatever that means? Is that possible? What does it even mean for a sequence of numbers to converge when you're not referencing a limit? There's a question, some, some really tough questions. And so um, even though the calculus was developed in the 1600s, it really wasn't until the 1800s that people began to worry uh, about the foundations of calculus. Okay, so in particular, Fourier series are um, series that you might learn about in a PDE's course or something. Uh, they are infinite sums of sines and cosines. Okay, and they did rather strange things that made the mathematicians of the day very, very uneasy. In fact, some of them uh, outrightly rejected Fourier's work. But nobody could deny that Fourier's methods actually gave answers, right? Where physicists uh, wanted answers, it gave answers, and it seemed to give right answers. Why was that? So, um, really, Fourier series uh, dealing, wrestling with series and sums, infinite sums, uh, brought about a revolution uh, in the 1800s in making these concepts precise. And it was a lot of the work we're going to talk about in this course is, is work of Cauchy uh, that has been uh, certainly simplified and streamlined uh, for, um, for uh, your digestion, but uh, was not necessarily so clear at the time. Um, Weierstrass and Riemann, 1850s, 1860s, also um, were big players in this development. Many other mathematicians I could mention. But I just hope to give you a sense that many of the, 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 the things we take for granted uh, really weren't so obvious uh, at the time, and a lot of it came out of wrestling with the infinite. So one of the first things we want to do in this course is actually show you how to construct the real numbers. Okay. What does it mean to construct the real numbers? So, uh, so that is actually going to happen in lectures two and, and three. Uh, but just to start off with uh, something that you are familiar with uh, and to give you some sense of what it means to construct an object, uh, we're going to start in this lecture by constructing the rational numbers. Okay? So uh, that's our plan. Uh, let's, uh, let's begin. And I'll use the board from, from here on out. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's begin with uh, some easy concepts, and just to make sure we're all on the same page, we'll establish some notation. 
So uh, let's first talk about sets and relations. And uh, I'm sure many of these concepts are going to be extremely familiar to you, but we're going to make sure that we know how to use some of these ideas carefully. So what is a set? Anybody? What is a set? A collection of things. And uh, as easy as that sounds, the notion of set is something that mathematicians had to wrestle with uh, very carefully uh, in, uh, in the 1900s. But we're going to call it a collection of objects. Okay. And uh, there's a reason we don't say a set is a set of objects. There's a good reason for that. Um, Here's, one, here's how we're going to write a set. So a collection of objects might be labeled with a letter. And I might notate what's in this set by uh, putting some things in brackets. Okay? So for instance, a set could be a set containing you know, a number, like the number 1. right? But it could also contain other objects. right? It could contain you know, a smiley face. That might be an object of this set. right? Could be a parallelogon. Parallelogon, yes. Okay. Uh, it could even be, if you want, uh, another set containing a couple of objects. Okay. A set might contain other sets. Okay. Oh, really? Interesting. So, just a, a little quiz here. How many objects does this set have in it? Four. Good. Four objects. Don't be fooled here because this creature is one set. Uh, as a set, it is an object in this collection, which is another set. Okay? Everybody with me? Okay. Good. Now, um, one of the things that you uh, should begin to do when you are learning to write mathematics carefully is to make sure that what you write is actually a complete sentence. Okay? So, um, of course, when I do work on the board, sometimes there will be shorthand, uh, but you should avoid that when you're writing mathematics carefully. And I will try throughout this course to write sentences. Okay, so a set is a collection of objects. Is that a sentence? Well, yeah, it is a sentence, but I haven't completed it. Okay, with a period. Okay, I, I want you to think about mathematics as being communicating mathematics well as communicating in sentences. If you open up your textbooks, any textbook, you will notice this, that mathematics is actually written in sentences. So even equations. So here I'd write, okay, so this is a command, right? I'm telling you to write S like this, but I should complete this thought with what? A period, okay? Even displayed equations you'll see written this way in your textbooks, okay? Okay, very good. Um, Here's another way we might describe a set. I might describe a set by telling you some property that it satisfies. So I might say, let S be the set of all little x. And I, I write a, uh, a colon here, which means such that. Little x such that. P of little x is true, where P is a sum statement about x. 